Hello everyone. Today we are going to conduct the full wave rectifier experiment. In the last lab we have conducted the half wave rectifier. Now we are going to conduct the full wave rectifier experiment. Okay, this is a circuit diagram of the full wave rectifier. In this circuit diagram, if we observe, it is a step down transformer. Okay, this is called as a this is a step down transformer. We are using step down transformer here. It is a transformer. It is a we are using center type of transformer. Okay, first of all, it is a step down transformer, and that too, it is a center type of transformer. Center type of transformer is having the three terminals: one, two, three. Okay. Now, if you see the circuit diagram again, uh, first one is a transformer. After that, there are two diodes we are using: D1 and D2. In the half wave rectifier, we are using only one diode, but here we have to use two diodes as it is a full wave rectifier. And this is the load resistance here. and it is of this this is the voltmeter this voltmeter used to find out the voltage and it is a cro terminal the cro the, that is a dso here we are using digital storage oscilloscope we can also use cro this digital storage oscilloscope is used to observe the waveforms output waveforms as well as the input waveforms here if you observe the circuit here this two diodes are connected n terminal two diodes n terminals are connected so first we will connect the Two diodes in terminal, but here if you see the circuit diagram, two you have two P terminals are not connected because in between there is a one more terminal is there. These two P terminals are not connected. That's why we will connect the two terminals separately. This is a diode one and diode two. Diode one and diode two P terminals I am separating with this gap, but two N layers are connected. As the two N layers are connected, we have to connect in the same line only. Okay, as the two N layers are connected, okay, so we have to connect like this. Okay, here two Ns are connected. That's why we have to connect vertically. Two Ps are not connected. That's why I am I am keeping in a separate holes here. There is a gap here. That's why I am separating in a different uh, differently. Okay, now if you see the circuit here, transformer. First terminal. It, this transformer is having three terminals. One, two, three. Transformer first terminal is connected to diode anode. So this is a transformer first terminal. This transformer first terminal is connected to diode anode. Okay. Next to transformer second terminal is connected to ground. So that's why this trans. This is the transformer second terminal. I am connecting to the ground. Okay. Next to this transformer. Uh, third terminal. This transformer third terminal is connected to second diode anode. This is the second diode anode. For this diode, as the both are connected, we should connect vertically. Okay. This is the first two diode. Okay. So this left side part totally completed. Next, if you see the right side here, for this this junction point, this is the this, as this both are connected, we are connecting vertically. For this two terminals. One, two, three terminals are connected. What are those? This DRB. This uh, instead of using the load resistance separately, we will use DRB. This is called as a DRB here. Okay. Here in the circuit diagram, DRB first terminal and this voltmeter. Instead of voltmeter, we use the multimeter here. Okay. This multimeter first terminal and this CR DSO first terminal. All are connected to this junction point. See here. These three terminals. these three terminals are connected to this junction point here now let's connect the uh, resistance first here so if you see the resistance here drb drb first terminal this drb first terminal drb first terminal is connected to this junction point i am connecting to this junction point next this volt voltmeter instead of voltmeter we are using the multimeter okay instead of voltmeter we are using the multimeter this multimeter first terminal This is called as a multimeter first terminal. We are using. Okay, this is a multimeter first terminal. I am connecting. We will connect the DSO ladder. Okay, now I am connecting these two terminals to the junction point. Now DRB second terminal. This DRB second terminal is connected to ground. This DRB second terminal is connected to ground. DRB second terminal is connected to ground, and next this multimeter instead of voltmeter we are using the multimeter. This multimeter second terminal is connected to ground. So this is the multimeter second terminal. This multimeter second terminal is connected to ground. 
okay this is the circuit diagram this is a circuit diagram and for this circuit diagram this is the connection okay so if you observe here this is the transformer transformer second uh, transformer secondary winding is having three terminals one two three transformer first terminal is connected to first two diode anode and the transformer second terminal is connected to ground and the transformer third terminal is connected to second diode or positive that is anode and the two cathodes are connected that's why we will connect connected in the junction for this two for this junction point drb first terminal this multimeter first terminal are both are connected and this drb second uh, drb second terminal is connected to ground and the multimeter second terminal is connected to ground now let's switch on the supply if you switch on the supply here Okay, now if you switch on the supply now let's see the input first now if you see the input here so we will observe the we will observe the input on the dso digital storage oscilloscope if you observe the dso here now here we observe the dso this is the input so i am connecting this cro dso terminals i am connecting this dso terminals at the input side input we are giving the ac supply as a input we are giving the ac supply on the dso we are getting the ac waveform so ac waveform we are getting now if you give the ac supply now if you give the ac supply to the rectifier circuit okay what is the output we will get that we will see okay if you give the ac supply to the rectifier full way rectifier circuit what is what is the output we will get that we will see for that here the dso is connected at the across this load okay uh, across this load the dso is connected now i am connecting dso first terminal to this junction point and dso second terminal is connected to ground dso first terminal to the junction point and dso second terminal to the ground now let's see here the I am connecting the DSO and we will see the output here. Okay, now this is the output we will get. Okay, if you see the DSO here, DSO, D, DSO input is AC and the DSO output is, sorry, DSO in, uh, input is AC and the output is DC. Okay, in the full wave rectifier, the input we are giving the AC but the output we are getting the DC. So, this is the full wave rectifier output okay this is about the full wave rectifier experiment if you see the waveforms on the dso the waveforms are looking like this so here two cycles are conducting it is a positive off cycle and it is a negative off cycle okay both the cycles are conducting but in if you see the half wave rectifier in the half wave rectifier only positive off cycle is conducting but the negative off cycle that uh, that was not conducting in the half wave rectifier but here positive off cycle negative off cycle positive and negative both are processing to the output in the full wave rectifier as the positive and negative off cycle both the cycles are processing to the output that's why this rectifier is called as full wave rectifier okay so if you see the calculations here in the calculations we have to find out the vac as well as the vdc okay so vac vdc we will find out by using a multimeter and the ripple factor we will find out by using this formula ripple factor is equal to under root of vrms minus v average whole square minus one next if you find out if you want to find out the regulation the regulation formula is v no load minus v full load divided by v full load Okay, now let's calculate the no load voltage and the full load voltage uh, we will find out now and the ripple factor we, uh, sorry efficiency we will find out by using the power output by power input now let's calculate the no load voltage now i am this is the uh, now i am not applying any loads here the resistors i am keeping in the zero position all the resistors in the zero position now if you find the no load voltage okay no load voltage we are getting 4.29 no load voltage we are getting now if we apply the load now we will see i am applying the slowly i am applying the load if we apply the 1 kilo ohms of load resistance here i am getting vdc is equal to 5.28 if i want to find out the vac vac is 11.11 .11. okay what is the use of this ripple factor ripple factor is used to uh, find out the ripples in the output okay if you see the output here so this is looking like ac only but even it is ac but is even it is dc but it is not the pure dc it is called as the pulsating dc pulsating dc means ac plus uh, dc plus ac ripples 
okay so i uh, generally the dc should be the pure dc should be the straight line but it is having the pulses this dc is having the pulses that's why it is called as pulsating dc okay so how much amount of ripples pulses are present that we will find out by using the ripple factor to find out the ripple factor we need vac as well as the VZ, vdc so now we are finding that only now i am applying again i am applying some load again now if we apply the load to 2 kilo ohm we are getting vac is equal to 11.2 and the vdc is equal to 5.33 so like that if you increase the load i am increasing the load again if i increase the load vdc is equal to 5.38 and vac is equal to 11.3 like this we will find out vac as well as the vdc this is a vac this is the knob point in the multimeter we will find out vac by keeping the knob in this position and we will find out the vdc we will keep the multimeter in this position and we will find out the dc so like this we will find out vac and vdc if you know the vac and vdc we can find out the ripple factor value okay so this is about the full way rectifier experiment thank you